Hello, so this is one of those videos that's full of random little things that's probably not big enough in, you know, the sense of doing a single video on one of these, at least not until I've explored some of them a bit more. So, this is sort of random eBay purchases and just sort of cool little projects I've got going on. So, the most basic one was just a little video for, I know a lot of people know about these, who have bought these rate meters recently when they turned up really cheap on eBay and were wondering, you know, how to get them running if they couldn't get the proper probes, because the proper probes from the, like, kind of old obsolete tech. And the easiest thing to do, although, personally, I would try and leave the thing intact if you could, this was just more of a proof of concept thing, because somebody wanted me to make one for them so they could buy it. Um, it's just literally a Soviet SBM-20 style Geiger Muller tube, uh, taped to the rate meter with a positive and negative wire going to it. I know a lot of people are going to go, oh, that's not done electronically good enough, but if we go turn it on, uh, the EHT is set to just under 3, that should be fine. Um, as you can hear, that's ticking and working, so there you go. Obviously the ticks per minute, counts per minute base are dependent on, you know, what's around, um, if there's anything radioactive around and whatever else. Um, I was hoping this wasn't contaminated. Good, it's not, because um, I'll just cover that in a second. So yeah, that's that's that. That's very simple. It's just obviously how you can literally just. It doesn't matter if you can't get the fancy old probes these used to use. Um, you know, you can just do that. So that's that. Now, I'll take the batteries out of that. Another thing uh, that's again not big enough to do a full video on, but it's certainly um, an interesting thing. I found a eBay seller that basically seems to sell off old physics labs, like stuff wholesale, and here's like a little proper lab iron chamber. Um, so basically how this would have worked, it's got two wires going into it where you connect it to a power supply, one's going to be the anode, one's going to be the cathode. Essentially how it works, I guess, is the tin is conductive, maybe some of this is conductive as well. And this is just a little iron chamber for doing experiments with. So that's cool. Um, again, when you get stuff like this really, really cheap, uh, I think you might as well buy it, even if it doesn't work, so then you can use it for experiments. But in theory, this is very simple, because it's just literally two electric power supply cables, you know, so you could crock clip stuff to it for doing experiments with. Um, and it's a bit more professional than if you try and make an iron chamber out of an old tin can, although I've done that. But yeah, there you go. So there's that part of an iron chamber's, you know, assembly, but kind of interesting if you wanted to make your own iron chamber, attach it to something or whatever. So there's that. Uh, this is one of the more interesting bits of the video. What we have here is an old CDV uh, 715. It's one of the ones I've got where the ammeter on it is, you know, like the display is a bit crap. Because if you look at that, see how much the needle drifts? And the reason for that is they used to have, like, gas in these. Uh, that's, I think, meant to be pressurised. So the needle should only move when it's meant to move through voltage going to it. Not through, you know, um, essentially like that happening. Anyway, so the problem was, although the CDV715 works quite well, the issue is that this actual ampere, or whatever you want to call it, ammeter, you know, display, um, wasn't very good. So I thought, if I take that off without doing much else, can I simply get the uh, contacts it had attached to a multimeter? And the answer is you can. Now, the reason this is really interesting um, is because, it turns out, CDV715s, if you put a digital display on them, essentially, uh, are very, very accurate even at background levels. Like, not compared to some iron chambers, sure, but lots of people have these laying about. So as you can see, I've got on the 1.1 scale at the moment. If I zero it, look, you'll see these numbers will change. So I'm going up there, and I let's go down, uh, but not that far. Uh, but the point is, it's drifting around, you know, zero where the background radiation is now. Um, which is actually really kind of nice because what it means you can do, and obviously you can set that to more sensitive or less sensitive on there, is you can actually use this to measure pretty boring things, um, you know, that aren't all that radioactive. And the reason for that is um, simply because, yes, the iron chambers in here, apparently because they are gas filled iron chambers, not air filled, you know, that are then shut, and the electronics in them are sort of sensitive enough. Now you get always a little bit of drift like you see on the needles anyway. But as I said, the problem is with one of these things, is trying to, if you were looking at something very, very low in radiation, you know, noticing if there was a 0.1 increase or whatever, where with these, you could put, say, a thorium lamp mantle next to the iron chamber. 
notice the number goes up a little bit, take it away, the number goes down a little bit. Obviously it does do a bit of drifting anyway, but I just thought that was an interesting thing, you know. Especially if you've got one with a busted display. But the idea, you know, I wouldn't say buy an old retro CDV715, tear it up so you can do this, but just the idea of unscrewing the old analogue display, putting a multimeter on it, and then realising that, you know, it's a lot more sensitive than everybody always made out. And even, you know, I didn't know that. Um, because as I said, to get the needle to move, you need to expose them to quite a lot, even on the 0.1 scale. But, turns out, you know, if you set the decimal places on the uh, multimeters, turns out they record a lot more information than you'd have realised. So that's that. Again, you know, like I said, if you want a good modern iron chamber, get a good modern iron chamber. Now, this might be the most interesting bit of the video if it works. I've not tested it yet. On eBay, through one of those wholesalers, they had um, some of these, and I didn't know what the condition would be like. Alpha drawers, basically, the idea is... Let me zoom out again. The idea is that you have a thing that you can... It's got this tin foil stuff that's kind of coming out, so I'll get that all cleaned out. But the idea is this is basically an alpha scintillator. Um, and I've got another scintillator on order, but of course, like buses, two come along at once. Um, so basically what these do is... I've already removed the scintillator bit from it. Um, so yeah, there's there's a scintillator and it looks all intact, so let's hope it works. So, um, basically, this has the old retro connection the rate meters have. So what I've got here is another one of my rate meters, um, because I just bought loads of these when they were getting sold cheap. Um, for different projects, as I said. Is to give this a test. So what I'm going to have to do is clean off all this broken foil that's there, because that's obviously just aged and fallen apart. But, you know, in theory this should work fine. So a scintillator, um, for those of you that don't know, basically is a much more sensitive thing than the Geiger, but, ah, it's the right connection look, but this, they're both the male connections by the look of it, so I can attach this to the rate meter, but it is going to require a bit of messing about. But, yeah, the interesting thing, look, is this will connect to a rate meter, um, but the thing is at the moment that obviously it's not going to connect as simply as just screwing it in, which I was hoping, because both of them have the male connections, not the female connections. I might have a spare one of the old things laying about. If not, what I can do is... Um, I might just crop clip it on for this video. But yeah, I'll, I'll find a way of attaching that to one of the rate meters. Um, so I'll stop the video now and just see if I can do that very quickly just to demonstrate if it works. But scintillators are way, way more sensitive than Geiger Muller tubes. The problem is they're bulkier and everything else. Um, I'll be talking a bit more about scintillators properly in a later video. But, right, let's see then if um, we can get this to um, run off crop clips. Right, moment of truth. So, I've just literally got a crop clip and a little sort of wire, really, going from the positive and that. So let's turn this on. Battery test works. I've set the EHT basically at the low end, because I don't know what voltage a scintillator is meant to run. I assume scintillators are probably very high voltage, but I don't know. So let's go to Synth. Put the speaker on, and let's see if we can get power going to it. Hopefully it works. I don't know. All of this was sold as basically untested stuff. So, um, let's turn him up a little bit. And hopefully, we might get some life come out of it. But as I said, all this was just sold as untested, sort of quite cheap lab surplus. But I thought, you know, it'd be useful for projects. But the EHT's right up there, so... That's not a very good sign, is it? Um, right, let's turn the HT down a bit more. And then what I'm just going to do is jiggle the wires around just in case they're not making a very good connection. Uh, the HT needs to be a little bit higher than that. Let's put it to 0 0.4. Right, let's go back onto scintillator. I've got the speaker on, so obviously that will tell us if it... Oh, there we go. So I think it's just the wires are a bit loose. Yeah, is that making a good connection there or not? Obviously what I'll try and do is, if the scintillator probe works properly, is try and just modify one of these to permanently take it. Um, but... Then I'll need to get a radiation source in a minute, if I can get the connection working well. Take the little protective window off the end of the scintillator, because obviously, 
Yeah, I'm assuming at the scintillator's end. Oh, is that a bit better? Hard to say, really. Yeah, this will definitely be worth playing about with for a video. Um, you know, for a full length one at some point, but scintillators are pretty fascinating. Um, I'm just wondering if there's a way I can probably, you know, try and clip these two bits together better. Um, I'm just debating at the moment if I can get some solder wire or something, just fold up some solder wire and stick them between the two contacts. So let me just take this out a second. What happens if I just uh, hold the scintillator and push those two oops, together? As I assume that's not going to make a very good contact, is it? Because the wires, because they're both males. But in theory it should be possible. I just basically need a little bit of something between the two things. Let's just get a bit of solder. Um, get my wire clippers. And the idea is basically just to get the... Um, little bit of wire. Pop that in there. I'll electrocute it myself, hopefully. Like that. Get the scintillator. Like that. And then see if I can um, just crop clip the two together. Like that, just for now. Be easier if I crop clip this bit first, then try and maneuver that into that. And look at that, well, until it went loose again on the connection. But... but the point is that it should, it looks like it's still working, it's just a case of adapting the connectors on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll get round to that for a later video at some point, but that, there you go. Big cool oil for scintillator. That should work fine with a rate meter uh, once I get the cables adapted properly to do it.